Welcome to Alliance Chat with the Chargers Alliance. My name is Robin Salters. I'm the Deputy Director of Athletics and Senior Women's Administrator at the University of New Haven. In the wake of the killing of George Floyd at the hands of Minneapolis police in May of 2020, the Chargers Alliance was created. The purpose of creating the Alliance was to provide a safe space for our student athletes to share and learn and have courageous conversations about topics on race, diversity, and inclusion. Part of the Chargers Alliance mission is to have the difficult but necessary conversations so that we can all learn and grow to be better informed and educated on topics that are not often discussed. To that end, we created the Alliance Chat, where we will be speaking with various members of the University of New Haven community about these topics. The chats will last only about 15 to 20 minutes and consist of various questions focused on a single topic of race, diversity, or inclusion. The conversations are meant to challenge, engage, and educate ourselves and others. Thank you for watching this month's chat, and we hope that you will continue the conversation beyond today as we move forward together. Welcome to our inaugural Alliance Chat with the Chargers Alliance. My name is Cam Garden, and I am a co-chair of the Chargers Alliance, as well as a senior on the women's volleyball team. For our first chat, we have chosen the topic of Black Lives Matter. Today, we will be talking with Ted Hotaling, head men's basketball coach here at the University of New Haven. Welcome, Coach Hotaling. Thanks, Cam. Thanks for having me on. This is, uh, this is exciting to, to chat with you and talk about some important topics. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, so just to start off, I want to talk a little bit about allyship. That's one of the big things that we discuss right. as a group with the Chargers Alliance. And um, you're agreeing to take a part in this chat is a huge step in uh, presenting yourself as an ally. So my first question is, how do you view your role as an ally to Black or Indigenous people of color on your staff, your team, and the Chargers athletic community as a whole? Yeah, you know, first and foremost, you know, I, I coach in a sport that traditionally has been very diverse. So I've been, I've been really lucky to, um, you know, make friends, uh, have colleagues, uh, people of color that have been a big part of my life big part of my family's life. So I think uh, when you talk about the world of sports, we, we normally exist in a very diverse uh, environment and with a very diverse group of people. Um, you know, part of your role as head coach is you have a lot of different roles. Um, more recently, over the last few months, uh, you know, we've, we've come across a lot of the issues that have, um, you know, plagued our society. Uh, for instance, the George Floyd situation was really, an, I think, uh, an awakening for a lot of people to discuss criminal justice and criminal justice reform. Uh, but my role really is to create an environment where there's psychological safety within our program. Um, understand that there's a lot of people from different backgrounds, a lot of people, uh, 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 different skin color, um, socioeconomic, racial, whatever it might be. Um, and really what I'm trying to do is create an environment where there's psychological safety, where people can have uh, thoughts, ideas, bring their own perspectives and have a conversation uh, without being judged or belittled um, so that we can have a dialogue. And uh, listen, I'm in, I'm in the same business. I'm trying to learn too. So, uh, and through this process of engaging with our players, uh, specifically on Zoom, which has had to be done for most programs, I think we've all gained some insight and uh, gained some, some input as far as what we can do better. But the big thing for me is to uh, be understanding, listen, and uh, to help our student athletes use their voices to, to help things move along. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I think it's interesting that you kind of bring up the topic of wanting to learn. I think there's a lot for us to learn on both sides, especially as things kind of develop, as this movement grows more and more. Um, there's actually an article in Tolerance magazine that says, when the Black Lives Matter movement comes up in conversation, it's often characterized in one of two ways. As the work of strategic activists drawing attention to and combating issues that harm Black people, Black communities, and humanity at large, or as a movement marked by violent outbursts and driven by an exclusionary, racist, anti-police agenda. As a white male coaching a sport whose participants are largely men of color, how do you view the BLM movement? And do you have conversations about it with members of your team? Yeah, you know, I think, I don't know exact dates, but uh, you know, after the George Floyd incident, we, we did a Zoom call on that Wednesday as a team. Um, you know, we have a, a diverse staff as well. And I know Coach Smith and I talked at length about how to approach it, what would be best for our guys. And so we've talked about it quite a bit, um, you know, immediately in the aftermath. And then beyond that, when the Black Lives Matter movement really gained steam, not just in our country, but, you know, some of the visuals that you saw throughout the world, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where people were swept up in this movement 
which was so positive in many ways. Um, but the Black Lives Matter movement is really a group of people who've been marginalized um, that want to see the table, right? That want to be treated equally. Um, I think all too often, I think we'll talk about this with the, you know, people who mention all lives matter, but it's not a zero sum game. Um, if people of color gain things in our society, meaning uh, equality under the law, the freedoms and the opportunities that are presented to most of us, it doesn't mean that it's taken away from me as well. Okay. So I think that's where it's really powerful. Uh, it's a voice. Uh, I think young people have really taken, uh, taken hold of it and led the charge as well. But um, yeah, I think it's a powerful movement. I think it matters. I think it's important. I think with all that we know and all the information that we're able to uh, glean, whether it's through the media, through social media, uh, it's an important movement. And I know our guys, um, you know, feel the same way about it. Yeah, I, uh, I noticed you mentioned the All Lives Matter. I'm nervous to call it a movement, but I know that that's yeah. been one of the responses to Black Lives Matter, just kind of describe All Lives Matter, or even some people who find it uncomfortable to say Black Lives Matter for whatever reason, because they find it taboo. So how would you uh, respond to anyone who kind of said that to you? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a movement either. I think it's, you know, people using, um, you know, having a different agenda, right? But again, I'll, I'll use, it's not a zero sum game. Uh, no one's saying that we're trying to get people of color more than everybody else. We're not trying to take anything away from uh, people that, that are different. Really what, what the Black Lives Matter movement to me is, uh, voicing the concerns of a group that's been marginalized, right? And in many ways, right? You can look at the criminal justice system. You can look at education. Uh, you can look at socioeconomic gains over the past 200 years within the black community. Um, so really what it is is, um, you know, this is about Black Lives Matter. This is about offering equality. This is about uh, freedom of opportunity. All these things that well, we allow for everyone in our society. Uh, and allowing black people to take part in that doesn't diminish anyone else's freedoms, equality whatsoever. So, it, it, you know, it's used in some ways to negate the power of the movement, but, um, you know, I, I wouldn't call it a movement at all. I just say it's just another point of view where maybe they need to understand a little bit more what it's all about. Exactly. Um, and you seem very passionate about Black Lives Matter, um, especially trying to learn from and learn with your team. And I've noticed that you all have Black Lives Matter warm-up shirts. So I'm curious how that conversation went about. Was that a team decision, a coaching staff decision, or a joint decision? Yeah, so, you know, really what we tried to do is when we started these Zoom calls, like we talked about earlier, we tried to just open a dialogue. And my job was to facilitate the dialogue, to allow people to talk openly about their experiences, about their perspectives, what it meant to them. Um, you know, and sometimes uh, there was kids in our program that spoke a lot about it. Some were a little bit quieter, but as we started going more, and I think you saw this with uh, the NBA and a lot of the NBA players and coaches who really took up the mantle of the Black Lives Movement um, movement, and, uh, you know, wore T-shirts in the NBA with, with different things on their jerseys. You know, I think our players just wanted to show some solidarity with people who had the same ideas and perspectives. Um, and we just tried to give them some ideas, but really and you know you're an athlete right you want ownership of the program to be held by everyone in the program not just uh, the head coach or not just the coaching staff we've tried to have that in our program each and every year we've been here sometimes kids really take the mantle and really go forward with it we have some older guys Derek Roland and Ross Jones who are, are very intelligent very smart who said a lot of uh, great things about what all this means to them and we just thought that it would be good for us to show some support for the movement um, as a group. Um, and what we came up with is t-shirts. Uh, t-shirts is an easy idea. We understand that there's more work to be done, right? It's not just a hashtag. It's not just a t-shirt. There's more work to be done. Um, and that's part of the conversations that we all need to have moving forward. But uh, yeah, it was a group decision. Um, I love the fact that we all wore them on the same day when we got them. I think our kids felt good about it. I think they felt a part of it. And I felt, you know, in some ways for all of us, it was more meaningful just to be, um, have some solidarity as far as everything that was going on. Yeah, definitely. And like you've mentioned a couple of times, I think there was kind of this outpouring of support for the Black Lives Matter movement after the murder of George Floyd. Um, and a lot of that was in athletics. We did see a lot of mm -hmm. these high profile teams wearing Black Lives Matter t-shirts or drafting statements of support. Um, a lot of athletic programs across the country drafting these statements of solidarity. Right. Um, and I think it even goes back to Colin Kaepernick and his decision to kneel as a protest and how he kind of got removed from the NFL for that. Um, so I'm curious, 
if you think that these movements and these actions taken by athletes across the globe really um, are really going to be able to sustain a movement or if these things are going to be long lasting. Yeah, I mean, that always remains to be seen, right? And we use this just with our players. Enthusiasm is common. Endurance is rare. And I think what really has to happen is people have to have the mindset that this is going to be an enduring movement, something that continues to be spoken about. Difficult conversations still need to be had. I think the one great thing that you've seen is, I mean, more people voted in this election than in the history of our country. I think over 150 million Americans. I think young people came out in droves to vote and try and act real change. Uh, the first African-American uh, from the state of Georgia was voted to the US Senate. So there's a lot of positive things that have come of this. I think one of the things that's come about, and we've talked about this, you know, our, all of our guys were registered to vote in the summer. Uh, we thought it was one thing that we could do and to take action to, uh, to have a voice. And I think uh, a lot of times, no one really knows how their vote works, but when it's done in mass, it can really make sweeping changes not just at the national level, but at the local level in particular. Um, but I do think there's been a lot of changes. I hope young people continue to have these conversations. I think they will. I hope young people uh, continue to vote in our elections and to really enact change. And uh, if there's things that they disagree with, particularly when it comes to the marginalized uh, people in our, our society, that they speak up with their vote in one, in one way or another. So there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, I hope that this is still a point uh, that people talk about. I know with our sport, it will be. I think that um, the NBA has really done a great job uh, with just uh, putting in more, more policies in place to help this movement and to help things in, in general society. I know the NABC, uh, the organization I belong to, the National Association of Basketball Coaches is doing great work behind the scenes with getting out the vote. Uh, you know, with Martin Luther King Day, there was, a, there was a booklet as far as how to approach Martin Luther King Day and talk to your team. So I do think there's a lot of things being done, but again, it, it's gonna have to be sustained by, and I always think this, if young people are on board and can really push the issue, I think it has a better chance to be sustainable. Yeah, definitely. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens going forward. Um, you know, I'm from Atlanta, so I was kind of seeing firsthand the whole election cycle yep. over break and just how intense everything was political ad after political ad um, yep. and just how much was focused on young voters. Um, and I think we're just really seeing a change in focus um, for politicians as well. Um, yep. Yeah. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is the Black Lives Matter movement originated in 2013 after George Zimmerman killed Trayvon Martin. And while it hasn't disappeared, I think since then it has been pretty quiet up until George Floyd was killed um, this summer. So I'm curious again, if you have any ideas how we can turn this moment into a movement so that it's more long lasting. Yeah, I, I do believe reaching one person at a time is really powerful. And uh, we talked about this with our team. You know, I have two young children. My, my son is 14, my daughter's 13. Uh, me being uh, in their lives, and uh, you know, enabling them to see people that are different but are the same as us. I think you can reach one person at a time. It creates an incredible groundswell. And I think that's what we're after, right? We're trying to reach each one of our players. Hopefully our players are trying to reach people in their families or their friends. Um, and I do think that's how a lot of change can be enacted. Um, but it, it, is, uh, it is part of uh, society, right? Any society that it does take something severe to happen for a powerful movement to occur. I don't think we're gonna see the incredible powerful moments that we saw in the summer, you know, the, the people in mass in cities. Uh, you know, my family uh, went, to, went to a rally, right? Black Lives Matter movement in our local community and in a neighboring community, right? I don't think we'll see that as often. Uh, that might not occur again until hopefully, knock on wood, something bad happens. But I do think now that it's out there, we've had difficult conversations. Um, you know, maybe it'll be part of curriculum moving forward within elementary schools, within uh, colleges and universities. Um, you know, I was an African American studies minor in college. I was a history major, African American studies minor in college, and I learned a ton. Um, I took the minor because of relationships I made when I got on campus at the University of Albany. So um, awareness brings about a lot of positivity. I think the awareness this summer is probably going to help in great ways for each and every one of us to do a little bit more. It may not look the same, right? With uh, you know thousands and thousands of people 
you know, uh, together in mass, but hopefully uh, through each one of us, through some initiatives, whether it's in our program, with the volleyball program, with our own department on college campuses and local schools, you know, it'll still be, um, you know, uh, very conscious of, of everything that's going on. Yeah. So, you know, we just, hopefully things will keep getting better. Um, we definitely have a lot of work to do, um, but I think, I think we are on the right track. So, yeah, but as we you wrap up, we have to oh, stay there, right? Uh, and yeah. we, we gotta, we have to keep having difficult conversations. And uh, I think that's, that's a big part of it as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's about all I have for you as we wrap up. Do you have any final thoughts or questions um, for me or that you would just like to share? Yeah, no, I think on our college campus, right, the Charger Alliance is a great step for our university, right? So mm -hmm. we talk about uh, some of the things that have happened after the summer events. This is a positive thing for our university. I applaud your efforts and your colleagues, their efforts in trying to make our campus, our athletic department, a better place and to raise some issues and awareness for all of us to to learn more about people that are a little different than us. And uh, yeah, I think what you guys are doing is great. And obviously if the men's basketball program wouldn't help in any way, uh, we're always on board. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking time to have this conversation with me and for sharing your thoughts on the very important topic of Black Lives Matter. Um, we hope our viewers are able to keep this conversation going and as always, go Chargers. Thanks Kim.